Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today's July 15th and the diseases and problems are coming into my garden. And I thought I would just show you what's happening, how I treat it. Some plants I can't treat, there's just natural die-off. Hopefully you don't get these diseases, but if you get something and it's similar to what I'm showing you and you can match it, go ahead and treat it this way. First thing is, is this plant was doing really, really well. It was the black plum. Of course, it's all died out now. And it went through a couple of stages that ended it ended with it really being dead and I'm going to pull this out. So the plant was doing really well. You can see the tomatoes on the bottom are beautiful and I will wash these and harvest them and I'll get rid of the plant um, after we're done this video. But as this plant developed, it was nice and green, the tomatoes were forming, uh, early blight came in, they've gotten a spray, but then the leaves started to get really flaccid and droop and it wasn't a watering issue. And then slowly but surely the leaves died out. And as the plant started having its root issue, blossom and rot set in. And when the bottoms of your fruits look like this, that's called blossom and rot. And I'll explain what that is and how you treat it. So as this plant started to die out, I thought I would give it a hydrogen peroxide drench. That was sort of a last ditch hope effort. And the idea is a three to one, four to one ratio of hydrogen peroxide poured in the soil, brings oxygen to the plant roots. If you had any kind of root problem, the hydrogen peroxide could cure it. Well, it didn't, and it was a long shot, so don't, don't worry about peri uh, hydrogen peroxide. So the plant died out, and in the middle of the growth, we see what blossom end rot is. Now, if you don't have a catastrophic failure like this, you just start seeing some of your fruit get a brown bottom. That usually happens due to a watering issue, or a calcium issue, or a combination of both. And what does that mean? You must have calcium in your soil. So the first thing I recommend is when you plant your tomato in the ground or any container, throw in a handful of lime. If you're worried about pH because lime will raise the pH of your soil, throw in a handful of gypsum. Gypsum won't affect the pH of your soil. That puts calcium into your planting area and you don't need a lot of calcium. So once you know that it's there, the next issue is watering. If you're watering regularly, the plant's healthy, it's able to access the calcium, pull it into the plant, and the tomatoes end up looking like this, you know, nice and fine. If they're not getting the calcium, if they can't pull the calcium out of the soil, or the soil doesn't have calcium, you get blossom end rot. So if you have a container plant, Roma tomatoes are really susceptible to blossom end rot. And you know you put the lime in, you could still put more in. Go ahead, take a handful, of lime or gypsum, mix it in water, make a slurry, really mix it around, and then just pour the liquid around the base of the plant. That way you know that you put calcium in there. If you want, you could just sprinkle it around, water it in, as you water, as it rains, the calcium will get there. You don't need a lot of calcium. The issue a lot of times is a watering issue. If your container plant dries out just one time, you damage the roots, it can't get the nutrients, it can't get the calcium, you end up with blossom end rot. I also sell a product called um, calcium nitrate on my blog. That's the chemical that you find in blossom end, end rot sprays. That is basically a leaf, a water soluble uh, foliar spray that your leaf can absorb through, through the leaf actually. And it will get some nitrogen, it will get some calcium and that gets it right into the system of, of the plant. And that's a good way to really try and correct blossom and rot quickly. Now calcium nitrate is taking nitric acid and calcium carbonate, you mix it together, you end up with calcium nitrate. It's not organic, but it's also not a deadly poison and it's perfectly fine to use. Now over on this tomato, you see a lot of leaves that have browned out. Usually when you have blight or leaf spots, it's a brown spot and then there's a yellow halo around it. Well, I sprayed this with Serenade and it looks like it controlled the early blight here, so the leaves are just dying out um, that were damaged, and it's looking pretty healthy otherwise, which is good. Now you come over here, let's see if we can find an example. You see this yellowing pattern, and that's a good sign that it's usually early blight in my area. But these all just got sprayed. I picked all the tomatoes I wanted, and then I sprayed them with Serenade. If you're having a really bad outbreak and you don't mind using chemicals, Dacanol works. Here's a good example of what early blight looks like on your leaf, the upper right one there. Stachanol works really well, but you need to research it and decide if you're comfortable with that chemical. What Serenade does, what Dacanol does, what you're doing when you're putting um, baking soda on here, you're putting on another product 
that really competes with the fungus, the early blight, the diseases, so that they can establish. So that's basically the bottom line of how these work. Some of them are chemical, some of them are like baking soda, some of them are organic like serenade, but either way, the idea is that you're trying to crowd out the bad diseases from getting on your leaves. Let me show you another leaf so issue. So here are some of my tomatoes that I'm doing an experiment in where I'm filling this full of water and I'm letting everything flow through the bottom of the container and it was a way just to see if I needed to water less. Now what happened, and this is really related to my zone and the diseases I get, putting the water here created a nice pocket of humidity around these plants that allowed a leaf spot to come in. Not early blight, this is more what kind of blight does. There's no leaf spot on this variety, but as soon as you come over to here, you see all these spots and the yellow around the spots. That's a leaf spot disease. You can see it all on the stem. Come over here, you see it all. Now there's no yellow halo because I started spraying. Look at that, that is a leaf spot disease. And that's what you look for to know the difference between a leaf spot and early blight. Now you treat them essentially the same way, but you can just see all the spotting on there and even on the stem. You treat them the same way. You have uh, bacterial leaf spots, you have funguses that come. If you're dealing with a fungus, you're dealing with bacteria, the sprays like Serenade, Dacanol, baking soda, leaf spot. What I'm looking for here is that it's just the brown spots now and not the yellow halo, which hopefully means I've killed off or I've controlled the leaf spot and the tomatoes here would be okay. I also have um, a variety here in a variety here, this one is not getting the leaf spot. That's a different issue going on there, and I'll just remove that. And here's the same tomato that I just showed you, and the same issue is coming up. This is a better example of what leaf spots look like. All on the stem. So these just got sprayed. I'll prune this out. I'm going to give them a chemical fertilizer, this one, a nice uh, high-end nitrogen, just to get some leaf growth going. If you don't want to use a chemical fertilizer, go ahead and use fish emulsion. But any time that I deal with fungal diseases or bacterial diseases and I remove a lot of leaves, I like to give them some high nitrogen to get leaf growth back. Not too much, but enough to kind of get them started. The sprays are for bacterial diseases, for fungal diseases. They're not for viral diseases. You can't spray for viral diseases. All right, let's go over to another tomato. So these are my tomatoes that are going to get one to two pounds and I'm a bit distraught because the early blight came in. This plant's doing fairly well, but you can see the pattern in the yellowing and you know I'm dealing with early blight as I always do. It just got sprayed. This one's losing a lot of leaves, but everything from those tomatoes down there, you know I'm going to get a couple of tomatoes. I had to remove all those leaves because of early blight and it's just really part of my zone, Maryland Zone 7, in July with the humidity and the weather and what the fungus likes, you know, it takes over on my plant. So I'm trying to do a series on these one pounders, but I don't know if they're going to survive or not. I hope that they do. So the good news is, is I do have green growth coming. I do, I will get some tomatoes, but it's not lush of how I wanted it for the series to really get big tomatoes. Coming over here, I was just shooting a video. This is my black or my midnight snack. It's a black cherry type tomato an indigo cherry tomato type, and it's doing really well. A couple of yellowing leaves you want to keep an eye on that, but this got sprayed. As you can see, that plant doesn't look too bad. This one was completely wiped out by the early blight, and I actually sprayed it with hydrogen peroxide to see, you know, if the peroxide would make a difference. It didn't. I might do a video on that, but a three to one ratio of hydrogen peroxide was a little bit um, too strong, so really a five to one. That means you would mix one part hydrogen peroxide, so that's 16 fluid ounces, with five parts water. So it's one of these and an equal five parts of water. And that can help with funguses, that can help with bacteria spots, as in the peroxide will cure it. So this will get all pulled out. I will uh, clean off those tomatoes and probably make some sort of green tomato saute. All right, one more area to so get to. So I just to. wanted to add an answer to a question. The question is, how do I deal with diseases in my area? And you do your best. You do sprays, you do prevention, but also plant your tomatoes in different places. These tomatoes are doing really well. 
They're in containers. I've also brought in some new tomatoes and put them in about three or four weeks ago. So put tomatoes in at different times. Grow a combination of indeterminate tomatoes, which will grow the whole season until disease or frost takes them. Plant some determinate varieties. They will mature more quickly. You'll get them first. But you can also drop in your determinate varieties you know, in my area in the beginning of July, as long as you get 75 or 80 more days of temperature, you can grow a second round of determinate tomatoes. But by putting in plants at different times, using different varieties, putting them in different places of your garden, you're going to have plants that survive and you will get tomatoes. And you can see, like this one, it's just loaded with cherry types. Got some nice size ones up there. And this is a yellow pear in there. So mix up the tomato plants and that will help you have a continued supply of tomatoes even when diseases come to your area. So this plant is my silvery fir and it looks awful and I just want to say it's supposed to. It's a determinate variety tomato. So I've been harvesting the tomatoes off there. There's a couple left that I'll take or I'll actually uh, maybe save the seeds from those. But a determinate variety tomato grows to a set height, sets its flowers, sets its fruit over a couple week period of time. It looks like a bird got into that one and then the leaves naturally die off. So if you have a determinate variety tomato, it's naturally gonna die off and, and you shouldn't spend time trying to save it because it's doing what it's supposed to do. Hope this gives you some ideas of the different diseases that can come and get your plants. Uh, gives you some understanding of spraying. You can use baking soda as a preventative as it changes the pH level on the leaves and makes bacteria and fungus uh, they have a more difficult time establishing on your leaf. You can use Serenade, which is organic, does something similar and it coats the leaves and it makes it hard for your early blight, your leaf spots to take hold. And Dacanol is a chemical spray um, that is really, really effective if you're having a huge uh, breakout of some sort of disease, but I would want you to read about that and decide if that's something you'd want to use in your garden. Please check out my blog at www.therustedgarden.com. And thanks for watching.